Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous video, we took a look and saw how the size of the sample made a difference in determining whether or not we were going to reject the null hypothesis or not, even though in each case the sample mean was the same. So we're going to continue that investigation, we're going to take a look at it. Again, we're dealing with water polo players, we're making the claim that the average size of water polo players is 100 kilograms with a standard deviation of 5 kilograms. Our null hypothesis says that the average size of players equals 100 kilograms. We meant with that equal to or less than 100 kilograms because we we're concerned to see, well, not concerned, but interested to see if the average size of water polo, polo players was greater than 100 kilograms. So that is, the, that is the alternate hypothesis. So we tried the sample of one and sample of two, and in each case, it didn't cause us to reject the null hypothesis. We failed to reject the null hypothesis because the sample size was so small that even though the difference between the mean of the population and the mean of the sample was significant, a total of five, it wasn't enough to give us confidence, meaning there weren't enough players in the sample to give us confidence that that was significant enough, so therefore we, we, we uh, failed to reject the null hypothesis. All right. So now what happens when we go to a sample size of 3? Again, the mean of the sample is 105. That hasn't changed. But now when we calculate the test statistic, we take the difference between the sample mean and the population mean divided by the standard deviation, which is still 1. But now we have to multiply that times the square root of 3. The sample size has now grown to 3, which is 1.732 multiplied times 1. So now the test statistic has grown to 1.732, which now is larger than the z-score. That means that the test statistic now moves into the critical region. Notice the sample size mean is still the same, still 105, but now it's based on a sample of 3 instead of a sample of 2. And now it was enough of a difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population and a large enough sample size of 3 to give it enough significance. We had enough confidence to realize now that we can probably reject the null hypothesis. We reject the claim that the average size of players is equal to 100 kilograms, implying 100 kilograms or less, and now we're going to accept the alternate hypothesis that the average size of the players is greater than 100 kilograms. If we pick three players at random and their average size is 105, that's enough confidence at the level of significance of 5% that we believe that the average size of players is actually greater than 100 kilograms. And that's how we did that. Now, what happens when the sample size increases again, but now it's equal to 9? Again, the sample mean is still 105, so the difference between the population mean and the sample mean hasn't changed. But now we have even a bigger sample of 9, so we calculate the test statistic, the difference between the sample mean and the population mean divided by the standard deviation, multiplied times the square root of the sample size, which is now 9, so 3 times 1 is 3, so now we have a test statistic which is way bigger than the z-score and therefore again we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Notice how far we are in the critical region. That shows us that we have quite a bit more confidence that we made the right decision and if we pick, an av if we pick a random sample of nine players and their average size is 105 that is significantly different than 100 and it's based on the sample of nine gives us a greater amount of confidence and therefore we can say much more confidently that we're going to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis that the average size of players is greater than 100 kilograms. So notice that even though the amount of difference between the sample mean and the population mean didn't change from the previous video to this video, just increasing the sample size gives you more and more confidence that you can reject the null hypothesis. And notice that it's simply based on the sample size alone. So comparing sample, the sample mean to the test statistic, the sample mean didn't change at all. The test statistic did change based upon the sample size. And eventually, the confidence is such that you could say, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis because the sample size is big enough to make that claim, even though the mean of the sample did not change. And that is how it's done.
Hmm. We're on a roll now. <laughs> <A> mistake. <laughs>